It's the way you take me up from down And place my feet on solid ground Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia and on this channel I teach women how to thrive in their lives, in their career, and in their faith. If you're new, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Hey Becomer. You all wanted me to talk about how to be bold for Christ in the workplace. I am going to read a scripture that's going to serve as my foundation for this before I jump right in. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. We have to have this inner resolve that we are not going to be ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. And so there's so much power in the gospel. There's so much power in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And so you can't be ashamed of that. Before you even talk about how to be bold, you yourself have to have this inner witness, this resolve that this is a message that I am convinced of myself. I believe wholeheartedly. Therefore, I am going to stand up for this gospel. Amen. That leads me to my first point that I already talked about, which was being certain of what you actually believe. You cannot be bold about something you don't even know yourself or you're not fully convinced of. So it's very important that you know what you believe, have this inner resolve that, okay, this is the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ came down. God, Jesus is God in the flesh. He came, he took on the appearance of flesh. He took on the, the body, the form of a man, and he lived a blameless life. He willingly gave up his life. He surrendered his life on that cross so that humanity could be restored back to God and have a relationship with God through him. And so his blood being shed was necessary for that reconciliation to happen. That's essentially what the gospel is, right? Psalms chapter 75, six to seven says, for exaltation comes neither from the east nor the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. So another thing you have to understand in the workplace is that God alone is the one that exalts. He's the one that promotes. He's the one that elevates one to a certain position. I think sometimes some people aren't being bold in their workplaces because they're afraid of what their bosses are going to say or how they're going to react. And they they view their bosses as like this deity that holds all this power and, and that boss is the only one that can help them get promoted or help them get elevated or whatever. But the Bible actually says that God is the one who puts one down. God is the one who exalts. Um, another and so it doesn't come from your boss god may use your boss to promote or to demote but he ultimately is the one to promote you and so that was something that i received actually from my pastor in a discipleship call some months ago because i was dealing with intimidation um with my boss not even about the gospel but about something else and um and she told me she said cynthia you know god is the one who actually has the ability to promote you or or not you know like god is the one who has has that ability so yeah just keep that in mind that there's nothing to be afraid of God is the one who backs you up God is the one who has you know get the letter of your promotion he's the one that touches the heart of your boss or your supervisor and says okay it's time for this person to be elevated to the next level I also want to say be prepared to suffer <laughs> listen Jesus tells us that you will be persecuted because you are my followers all right there are people who get persecuted simply because they just open the Bible and they read what the Bible is saying and then some people because of that they get offended and they say oh well this is hate speech just because you're reading the Bible the words of the Bible there have been preachers that have been literally shot in the head because they were reading what the Bible says and so it's important to know that I'm not gonna tell you all this fluff like oh it's gonna be okay you're never gonna be rejected no in fact the scripture tells us that everyone who desires to live godly in this day and age will suffer persecution you're gonna go through something so i just want to prepare you for that right because <laughs> god is sending you out into this babylonian system into the workplace you have to expect suffering. You have to expect persecution. It does not mean that God is not with you. In fact, it actually means he is with you, all right? But I also want you to be prepared for people to respond well. So I think sometimes because we're so used to um, getting backlash when we preach the gospel, we don't also have this expectation that people will actually listen and that um, God is gonna give the increase and, and fruit is going to come out of that. And so also just be, um, 
in a place of anticipation for people to actually respond to the message, for people to actually look at your your um, your boldness and say, oh my goodness, I want the God that she has. This happened several times throughout the scriptures in the book of Daniel. He did not relent. He, he did not pray to another God and the people around him saw the people in, in Babylon, they saw that and they're like, oh my goodness, we want to serve the God of Daniel. You see this in the book of Esther. When Esther um, led her people to a place of fasting and mourning and repentance, God saved them. They were no longer going to be annihilated by their enemies. And so the people said, we, we want the God of Esther. We want Esther's God. So there's a thing when somebody takes a stand in the place that God has strategically put them in where other people begin to see, oh my gosh, your your, your boldness, your, your stand that you took and in, in, to see how God has brought you through. I want that God. I want to serve that God. Okay, so be in a place of expectation for people to also respond positively. Another thing I want to say is that you have to let your light shine. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. We are a city that is set upon a hill and we cannot be hidden. There's no way to hide light when you're when you're in a place of darkness. There's absolutely no way. So you also have to be reminded of your identity. You are light. The Bible says that you are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavor, what good is it? You are the light, you are the salt. And so you have to understand who you are. When you step into these places, you can't step in dealing with intimidation. You can't step in dealing with a defeated mindset already. No, you have to understand that salt preserves. So you, by reason of you being there, are bringing preservation into that, that atmosphere spiritually. God has given you authority. He said, wherever the foot of your soles, the soles of your feet touch, I have given you. So don't step into that place with a defeated mindset already that, well, you know, I'm just here and just letting things happen. No, you take authority over those atmospheres. You, you declare Christ, you proclaim Christ. Why? Because Christ is in you. He is the hope of glory. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. I understand that our workplaces are very much pagan, ungodly, excuse me, you have people with all kinds of beliefs. They're trying to indoctrinate us with all sorts of things go through all these culture, cultural sense, cultural sensitivity or inclusivity trainings and things like that, but it's all just rooted from the kingdom of darkness. And so you have to understand who you are so that you are not allowing these people to tell you who you are. You have to be anchored. That's another thing. You have to be anchored in your identity. You cannot waver. You cannot allow these systems to shift you out of who God has told you that you are. I also want you to understand that God is going to give you the words to speak. I want to read Matthew chapter 10, 16 to 20. It says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But be aware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. I'm gonna read 22, for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved. And so again, God is sending you out as sheep among wolves. You are going into the marketplace. He's sending you out into this pagan system, right? He's sending you out as sheep among wolves. And he's saying, don't be afraid. Don't worry. Don't overthink about what you're going to say beforehand. Just know that he is with you. He's backing you up and you are not alone.